Hi all, let's have a look at the fascinating game 12, Alpha Zero versus Stockfish 8. So this is part of 20 games sent to me recently by Deep Mind. This is in TSEC World Championship condition, so 44 threads on 44 cores for the mighty Stockfish 8 at the time, which was the World Championship uh, winner of TSEC. Uh, so let's have a look at this game. The opening book, D4 from Alpha Zero, Knight F6, C4. G6, we have a King's Engine defense, one of my favorite openings with black. F3, the Simish variation. Bishop E3, this often has a standard plan if left alone for this kind of thing, casting queenside, exchanging off the bishop, H file attack. But black reacts with C5, a well known gambit idea. In this opening book, it's ignored. Knight C6, D5, Knight E5, Knight G3 protecting c4 e6 bishop e2 we get a kind of benoni pawn structure here this is the end of the book by the way after c takes d5 so in this start position white has a space advantage but as with most benoni's blacks getting this pawn majority on the queen side that's the trump card for black the three to two pawn majority to play with and a6 gives the idea that b5 is very natural and the most common move in chess based live book is a4 which seems a very logical move to clamp down and castle kingside peacefully without worrying so much perhaps about this these pawns coming down the board uh now here actually queen d2 was chosen by alpha zero this has been used uh by grandmasters before but it's a bit rare compared to a4 so b5 is actually permitted so that's a kind of interesting decision and now uh, white castles we have here rook e8 and now alpha zero goes for bishop h6 b3 has been played by the australian grandmaster ian rogers against kinderman there's a game in prague 1992 which saw black's queen side being attacked with a4 here and then fixed and then this was a nice game let's have a quick uh, run through just for those interested so in Rogers playing with the white pieces manages to get a very dangerous past C pawn and play C7 here leaving the bishop hanging because of rook B8 and that's winning that's a win there in 35 moves so a great game by Ian Rogers with B3 here now leaders move did I say Leela <laughs> I mean Alpha Zero's move is Bishop uh, H6 <clears throat> okay uh bishop takes h6 queen takes h6 queen e7 okay and now yeah a quite a nifty maneuver knight d1 pretty logical what, what else actually to do there's a constant threat perhaps of b4 so in advance of that what can be constructive with this knight let's see queen f8 the queens are kept on with queen d2 fun h5 h4 fixing that pawn down sometimes h4 h3 is going to be annoying to white so h4 bishop d7 now knight f2 so controlling for the moment this g4 square means uh that basically f4 could be on the cards later we have b4 which give the gives the idea that bishop b5 might also be desirable for black to exchange off knight square bishops and in fact that happens here making c4 a bit more vulnerable perhaps but now f4 here the knight goes back and actually the bishop avoids that exchange with bishop f3 queen h6 kind of pinning this pawn to the queen rook a d1 so everything looks nice and central here for white and now a kind of unpinning plan of this f pawn to block this diagonal so getting a knight to g5 so a5 knight g5 nice positional play but black is playing on the queen side it seems quite aggressively with the pawns now here a thematic looking break against benoni's e5 a nice thematic pawn break there's a classic game penrose against tau which penrose manages to win in brilliant style with e5 and that strikes me as one of the most iconic e5 break games against the benoni uh of interest but here yeah the pawn break is being used and what does it do what does it actually do well there's a pass pawn here a central pass pawn black's pawns have been uh 
the structure has been damaged a bit. This is a little bit, a bit weaker. Uh, also, the e5 square has been used up by black's own pawn. And now f5, make sure that pawn is still used up. So black can't use e5 unless a counter pawn sack. So f5. So it does seem very thematic here. Now we see bishop c4 hitting a2 though. And that looks awkward. What does white actually want to do? Commit a whole rook just protecting? Move, move this? Wouldn't that give black counterplay? No, a very interesting decision indeed. d6 just offering a2. So two pawns down here. Now the point is bishop c6, which hits a4 and a nasty pin. There we have bishop b3. Uh, just to show another alternative, if the pawn is left just to be taken without a fight, then this kind of scenario is very pleasant indeed. Bang, bishop takes d7, rook takes f7, just to show some of the resources. So bishop b3, hitting the rook, protecting the pawn. The rook comes to try and win that. And now the bishop's controlling a8. So this pawn is going to be won. Uh, it's far too dangerous to consider taking on f5. That's a much, that's a really strong knight. That's out of consideration um, for most players. Uh, rightly so so bishop takes a4 bishop takes rook takes uh so just the pawn down again and i believe it looks as though white in in end games this pawn could be quite good but there is a two to one pawn majority however is there an active rook for white here now after this move uh with rook a7 this looks like a very very nice uh rook on the seventh as Nimzovich would say. So now rook c7 arresting these pawns. Rook e5. And now Alpha Zero cashes out into an advantageous ending. So knight free takes e4, inviting exchanges. The immediate threat is if white has another move, knight takes f6, check and rook takes. And it just seems too dangerous to do much else rather than simplify here in the, in these circumstances. So we see simplification. Knight takes. Rook takes, yeah, not this way. Knight takes, because then there's queen takes d2, and then rook takes e1 check. So no, safe way. Rook takes e4. Rook takes, knight takes. And let's have a look now, take stock at this end game. The active rook uh, is very da dangerous. Black's 2 to 1 pawn majority seems immobilized at the moment. We have rook fd8, and so now. Yep, equal on pawns. Knight e4 threatens, rook takes d7 for knight f6 check, just to put that on the board. So king f8 was played, you know, say b3. Uh, then rook takes d7, knight f6 check. Uh, on c4, by the way, this is slightly different. White should actually take on c4 here not indulge this tactic because these pawns are, s are quite dangerous if rook takes d7 here is actually just an equal line after c3 this pawn's queening basically and with check uh, but it's just perpetual check because if the queen ever did anything else like queen d8 there's knight e6 check and then so yeah it's perpetual it's a draw that line but there's no points after c4 rook takes c4 so uh so king f8 is a good move in the circumstance. Uh, so king f1, b3. And the problem is, yeah, the king can come up to uh, take one of these pawns potentially. Rook e8, king d3. Knight e5 check. Black's being a nuisance though. There's no king c3 here. This would just mean knight f7 hitting the knight. And then if the knight moves, then knight takes d6. So this would force basically this position again. So uh, white has to play, like in the game here, king e3 to get anything. And the king's potentially threatening to go on a king walk. But rook on the 7th is a major trump card in this end game. Uh, it's a huge one with that passed pawn in the center. Knight f7, d7. Yeah, and this is now winning material. Black's pawns are actually in big trouble. The b3 pawn next, uh, but safeguarding the second rank. And now taking here. So white is material up now, clearly, without too much hassle. Giving up d7 to win g6, which weakens h5 in turn. 
so h5 will be the next logical target uh, so it's it's technique from here so three pawns up uh, a lot of damage has been done let's have a quick run through the remaining moves let's see the technique okay so these pawns are being pushed And this pawn on the queen side as well. Oh, hang on a sec. Bit of trolling behavior, perhaps. <laughs> Giving up a pawn there. Okay. Um, so, here, yeah, that pawn was given up, yes. But here it was, it was actually uh, adjudicated as a win for white at move 90. Yeah, it's it's pretty winning here technically. This this should be uh, enough to win. Uh, so um, okay, let's say five key points about this game. What what do we get from this game? Well, Alpha Zero showed a great thematic pawn break e5. So you know, from self-learning to play against the Benoni structures with such fluency is really good. Uh, and also the d6, uh, you know, allowing a2 to be uh, taken really calm play you know being two pawns down getting one pawn back which meant later a powerful rook on the seventh rank uh and then this end game transition was really quite instructive just a small edge but nagging was enough uh to get a significantly uh winning advantage so a very instructive game position he played which we can learn from and shows great fluency of pawn structures and pawn breaks okay yeah, okay, if you enjoyed this game video, uh, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. You can play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance of of these games from the improved menu learned from the Masters. Uh, the YouTube order button there. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe to the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks very much.